All right, this video is to introduce and teach how to add um, uncertainty to averages that you yourself collected and then also how to, uh, to graph that and to represent that uncertainty graphically and according with how the IB asks us to do so. So I have the sample data set here, okay, that relates voltage to current, okay, and again, I have my uncertainties written into my, um, my chart, okay. But I don't have one for average amper now, or my average for this set of five trials. And the reason that is is because um, it actually needs to be calculated. Okay, we, we, we could just carry this through and say 0.01, but then you would need to rationalize, and that's not necessarily as sound as we could do. Um, so I'm going to show you an alternate technique to use to do so. Okay, um, so we need to figure out what the uncertainty is with this and we're going to do so um, by finding what that average difference is or the biggest differences are so if you look through this column here okay my simple average for this column is going to be 2.24 and then subtract that from any one of these numbers and as it looks 2.5 is the largest away on the high end and 2 is the largest away on the low end 2.5 is 0.26 amps away so the difference here is 0.26 amps. And again, I'm just using this column to keep track of what we're talking about. You'll see um, as we fill this out. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording, fill the rest of this chart out using the same method. I'll do it one more time with this group. So 4.32 is my average. So I need my largest difference. 3.9 is about 0.4. 4.8, that's going to be about 0.5. I believe this is going to be my largest difference between my test and my average. So 4.8, then the difference between that and 4.32 is going to be, uh, what is that? 0 0.5, 0.48. Okay, so we're going to do that for the rest of this chart. Okay, so I finished filling this chart out and it turns out the largest difference between average and any one of our trials is 1.1 amps. So the uncertainty that we're going to have for our average amp column is 1.1 okay so now we're gonna take that and we're gonna use this when we actually graph our information so I've already gone ahead and done the liberty of graphing this in logger pro but now I know that my current this uncertainty for these is going to be 1.1 amps so we need to show that in our graph okay now typically speaking will only show the uncertainty for one part and so in order to show uncertainty on this graph we double click on any point and go to options okay and we want to show our error bar calculations now we have the choice between percentage or fixed value okay we want a fixed value so we need to enter enter in our error constant and our fixed value like we found with all that work that we did on the last one is 1.1 and that's going to be applied to our graph so we now have error bars representing that 1.1 amp uncertainty onto our data set. Okay, now this is enough um, for what we want to have in terms of error bar because it shows that uncertainty there. Okay, we could technically also show the voltage uncertainty on our x-axis if we wanted to. Um, however, this is the one that's really going to yield us um, most information or the information that we're looking for. Okay, now I want to point you guys back to this sheet that you guys got handed out to in class and it teaches and shows how we add error bars in but then also how we want to have a best gradient and a shallowest gradient or our range of values that we could have and then also how to produce that so I'm going to take you back to logger pro and I'm going to show you one how to enter in a line of best fit which should be relatively simple for us and then two also enter in um, that max and that min line so back to logger pro okay again to get that best fit line we hit that r equals and we're given that content right here or that information right here okay now to get the max and the min values we have to do a little more work okay we can't use the r equals we actually have to manually set a function and so the function that we want to set okay I'm gonna go back here the function that I want to set for the max I want to have start from this error bar okay it should go from the min on your first point to the max on your last point. I just realized you guys probably can't see this that well. 
I'm going to move this over just a little bit. There it is. So you guys can see the error bar. So we want to go from the min on our first point to the max on our last point. And so I'm going to go ahead and use the graph function to do so. Now this is again uh, the f of x one. And we want a linear function like we have here. And I'm just going to go ahead and enter the fit. Okay, now I need to manipulate this a little bit to get it to go so that the line strikes through here and then also there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this a steeper slope because I think that might help it. Okay, now I have a steeper slope. I'm going to move this down closer to the y-intercept. Okay, so it looks like I'm getting closer to it. But now as I bring this line down, i got to adjust it vertically by adding more slope. And I'm going to take this down just a little bit more and maybe one more onto the slope. Let's go to 5. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And this line goes through that min and this max. Okay. So we need to do that one more time to go from that max to this minimum. Again, to show you how to do this, curve fit, set a line. I want to move this now. I need to make it go from here to here. So I'm going to make my slope a little bit less. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bump this up. We'll move this so that it goes, I'm going to do this a little quicker, 0 0.5. We'll see what that looks like. One. I need to bump it up a little bit more yet. Now, again, there's no real science to this. You guys are kind of just going to have to pick and figure this out as we go. That looks pretty good in terms of my low end. So now I'm going to bring this down uh, by reducing the slope some more. Okay, so that's good. Slightly off. I'm going to bring it up a little bit and I'm satisfied with that so there's my max line okay so now when we do this the IB asks us to not only show our linear fit which is my best fit line but then these also represent our uncertainties hopefully that helps you understand the content that we learned today again uh, this is one way um, not necessarily the only way remember when we talk about uncertainties, we talk about error bars, we talk about range of values that you could have within uncertainty. I want you guys to remember that it's not a, a solid procedure. There's no cold cut always way to do it. It's an art. Okay, You guys need to be diligent in making sure that you, one, explain what you did, explain where it came from, and then be able to apply that consistently throughout your lab reports. So long that you're able to do that, you're going to do just fine on our, I, or our uh, IB assessments. Hopefully that helps. Again, email um, or let me know if you have any other issues. Over and out.